Okay, Coach Bergman, so OAC sectional here. The biggest OAC sectional this weekend. Oak Harbor's doing something right. You guys have been doing something right for about eh, 50 years here now, right, with this program. How long have you been the head, the head coach at Oak Harbor? This is my 28th year here at Oak Harbor as the head coach. And then before that, you were assistant for four or five years? I was years? Uh, junior high coach for like six years. So you've been here over 30 years. 35, how, this might be. How much tread left on the tires here? Uh, not much. Not much. It's barely going. But it is going. Does it? Is there enough tread for Bodie Miller, who's in sixth grade, to get through? I don't know. <laughs> we don't fun, know? As long as it's fun and, and uh, you know, I have good help, you know. I'll keep doing it. Okay, keep doing it. So, so right now, could you retire right now as a teacher? Uh, could, but usually need 35. Okay. So you're waiting on the 35. How far are you from the 35? I'm at 34. Oh, it's 35. So one more. It could just be one more year. No. I mean, no? I, I, I'm going to all stay in. As long as my health's good, I'll How is your health? Good. Got one new knee? Good. Two. Oh, both of them? Two, yeah. Still hitting the bike a lot? Sure. Feel all good, though? Time. Yeah, feel great. How, how are the snacks? I know you love, you're a snack man. We all know that. How are the Chocolate snacks? Chocolate chip cookies are hard to beat. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's holidays, though. That's true. How are you doing with the holidays? Good, good. I'll work harder after the holidays are over. Why, why fight it? Just go with it. Bike every day still? Yes. Every day? Six days? Seven days. You go seven days a week on the bike? Yeah. Half hour every day? Usually, yeah. And switch up with the elliptical. So how many days on the elliptical? Well, I mean, I'll bike and do the elliptical on the same day. Okay. So you'll you'll bike and elliptical the same day? Yeah. I mean, You're a maniac. Like 45 minutes. No, it's just you either get, you either have fat or you want to get fatter or not. You know, I don't. So. Okay. You wanna, and you want to stay above ground? That's right. That's right. Of, of you, 14 kids. You're one of 14. Right. 12 of you are still alive? Yes. That, that's right, isn't it? Right. Bill and Hank right. passed yeah. away. Right. Correct. Bill was the oldest, Hank was second, right? Correct. That's okay. very good. I, I have a memory. I remember I'm things. Impressed. But, okay, when we look at, and you're a wrestling family, you know, I look at the wrestling family that you guys, you know, you guys have done a great job bringing this event, the OAC, to uh, Oak Harbor. Was it a no-brainer for you guys? Yes, I think it was a no-brainer. You know, Jude and, uh, um, they do a great job, you know. Uh, so it was a no-brainer, and, and this is our first year doing it, and we're having a lot of great help. Um, so it's... It's been a success so far today, and um, you know we're excited. We're excited. When you can get 270 people in and out in under like four or five hours, that that says a lot about your staff. You got a lot of great volunteers, a lot of great parents. The program here, you guys have been runner up in Ohio. I want to say four times. Three. Three times. So you got a really good program, and then. Your nephew edged you out a couple years ago for, for runner-up, right? Right. And then they had a great run. They won two in a row, right. won the, the dual title. So they have a great team as well over at Genoa. That's your nephew, Bob Bergman. Right. So you guys have done a great thing. I know that they, they're involved. They do a great job. Don D'Amelio does a great job. But when you look at, you know, the, the volunteers you have and the support staff, right? Yeah, incredible, incredible. And, and that's the only way you can run a, uh, an event like this. And, then, you know, having Jared up from here, too, uh, overseeing it, it helps tremendously. So uh, you can, you couldn't run this without all your volunteers. So I look at Division Three right now, and it's it's kind of like you guys could jump in there, but you're going to need some guys to really make jumps. Okay, I know my two nephews are going to have to make huge jumps for you guys to compete for a trophy, right? Maybe not maybe not a gold one, but another silver one potentially. What do you guys got to do to jump in the mix this year? And, and how many qualifiers? What's it going to take for you guys to be in that mix for a trophy? Well, I mean, we just want to get better every day. Just keep, just keep getting better. You got to get healthy right now. We got a few guys banged up. Um, so, you know, you need some luck, you know, to do it. We only have two, two seniors right now, so uh, very difficult. You know, to make a, a substantial uh, push this year, I think in the next few years we might have a chance. You know, if we keep working hard. So. I, you know, and I, I tell my students all the time, winning makes everything better. Does winning make George Bergman want to stick around longer? Sure, I I refuse to be here if we're going to lose. So um, definitely, it makes it easier. Everything tastes better. Uh, winning is where it's at. You know, but having great kids is the main thing. I mean, we have great kids that you want to come in the room and work with every day makes it exciting so as long as you have great kids you know you can teach them the techniques and and, and help train them and, and they will win as long as they're great kids and they're, they're coaching so the thing that i noticed about your program the way you run it um so it's run much like a division one program um i had no workload problem 
as far as going from Oak Harbor to Kent State. It was not a problem. I know your nephew, JD, he had no problem. I know Ian had no problem to Kent State. Um, why such a high workload? I mean, you guys do 60 sprints before practice three days a week. Um, there's lifting three days a week. You know, you got morning lifts, you got afternoon, then you go an evening workout. How do you guys get people to buy into that? And, and, and do you think it's the difference sending guys to the next level? You got an uh, NCAA Division II champion two years ago. JD's made the finals. Ian was a three-time All-American. You've had a ton of success at the next level. Do you think it's the workload, and how do you get kids to buy into that workload? Um, I mean, we believe that hard work beats talent, or talent and work hard. And, um, this is the perfect sport for it. Um, I, we've always done it, so I think they know when they come into it, that's expected. And, and now we're getting... Uh, the next generation, you know, maybe I coach their dads. Now they have a kid, uh, so they have a big influence on their kid wrestling and, and understanding what it takes to, to be good at it. But you do have to put in the work, get up early and get after it. Do you have any con- do, you, do you have any doubts, actually? I know you have the confidence level. Whenever there's a kid and a coach asks you about them and you know that they can do your work level, is there any any reservations about giving them a good recommendation to go to the next level? No. Your son's a Naval Academy grad, right? Your grandfather was a Naval Academy grad. He didn't wrestle there. But, like, is there any thought? Connor Witt, Air Force Academy grad. You got, you got Academy grads coming out of here, right? Right. Is there any, any doubt in your mind whenever no, you got a guy? No, not at all. As long as they put in the work and they show up every day and uh, are ready to grind. I mean, that's what this sport entails. Okay, biggest freak. I, I go JD, I go Ian. Who's your, who's your, is there a guy who's an intangible freak? Those two. Are they, is that, seriously, the, I mean, they're both yeah, three-time All-Americans, I mean, right? Are, and then everybody else? Absolutely. I no, mean, those, seriously, those guys no, are... Those two are way out. Yeah, just freaks. I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, like if the Lord wanted to create a wrestler, you know, that's what he did in those two. I mean, those guys were, were so doggone strong, uh, you know. You can spend all the time you want in the weight room that, that wouldn't equal to those two guys. I don't think so, they, they were they weren't big lifters even. Those no, crazy. I mean, they, they did what was expected of them, but they were starting on third base when it came to freaking strength. Yeah, okay, so when you guys have, you know, people see those guys. Those guys are two unorthodox guys. George Bergman doesn't teach an inside trip. George Bergman doesn't teach an in, you know, a boot scoot. You don't teach all this crazy power you're not in great positions all the time. You got to be a freak to do it. Where do they pick up that? How do you get guys like that out of this program? Well, I mean, you encourage them that. I strongly believe that wrestling. You can learn from a lot of different people. So I encourage them to go to Jeff Jordan's camp or a Mitch Clark camp or a, you know learn from other people, and they've learned from other people, and they've brought that back into the room. So uh, an inside trip, you know, maybe you have one out of fifteen kids that can use it. So, uh, you know, they picked it up by doing the freestyle and going to other people, and I encourage that. Uh, it, there's so many people that have such a great knowledge of wrestling, especially in the state of Ohio, that we're fortunate we can learn from Eric Burnett, from, you know, Moran when he was, had his thing going. So uh, I've always encouraged them to go out there and learn. Uh, you do, it's such a simple system, though. Like, I look at just like watching my nephew wrestle. He never comes out of a stance. They're always pulling on somebody's head, right? right. Such a simple system. You know, I mean, how do you, you guys have such you have over 20 state champions with a simple system, and I want to say over 15 of them have been under you. Yeah, I mean, definitely it's the fundamentals. I mean, you got to be in a great stance, um, you know, good leg attack, good front headlock. I mean, it's, it's I think everybody pretty much knows it. You have to stand up on the bottom and maybe have one turn on top. So it's, it's nothing fancy, but you got to do it better than the next guy. And you got to be in great shape and hopefully you're stronger than the next guy. You work on your strength and the conditioning and, and then the technique comes into play and you have a chance to be successful. Attack the body both sides. I remember right. that was a big thing. Attack the body both sides. Head hands. Right. right. I mean, the same stuff. Right. It has not changed. Like If I came in there, it'd be like the same thing from 25 years ago. Right. Right. That's hard to do, George. How do you do it? It's one day after another. <laughs> I mean, <it's, laughs> do you still put? Do you still work in the summer? Do you put down black top no, or anything? No, I don't. I don't work in. When did you stop doing that? Uh, oh, probably twenty years ago. Twenty years ago. Oh, yeah. With with when my kids started when you coming beat, up. Last time you beat Tate up. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we got to get back in there. You got anything else for me? Nothing. Okay. You're not horrible at interviews. I want you to know that you do a great job, Coach. Thanks for the time. Keep grinding. Um, maybe there, there's two other Miller kids. Maybe they move back to Oak Harbor. If you stick around, we keep we can wheel you around the wheelchair. You can coach them, all right? Okay. Thanks, coach. Thanks.